Hello and welcome back to the Wellness Check. Today's video is about nightmares and PTSD, nightmares and trauma, and the correlation between the two, what does it mean, and some helpful ways in which to get out of the loop of nightmares. So first let's just start off with dreams in general. We all dream every single night we dream it's just a matter of do we remember it or not and it's dependent on what time of the night the dream is happening so we tend to remember our dreams much better and we can recall them much better right after we fall asleep and right before we wake up dreaming happens in the REM rapid eye movement stage of sleep which is a very deep sleep it's a sleep in which your body is asleep and your mind is very awake, which is different than the stage of sleep called deep sleep, uh, where your mind and your body are totally asleep. When we are talking about REM, your body is asleep, it's not moving, but your mind is awake. There is a lot of opportunity for your unconscious mind to begin to process the things of the day and of the past without your conscious mind interfering with it. When we are in our awake days, awake, awake time of the day, where our body is awake and our mind is awake, it's the waking hours, it's the daylight, we are at work, we are at school, we are getting things done. Um, our conscious mind and our ego state of mind can pretty easily push things away. It can push memories away. It can push feelings about those memories away. It can push triggers away. And we are all so busy and so consumed with it that either it's because we're busy that we're not acknowledging it, or it's so uncomfortable and overwhelming that we actively push it away during these conscious hours. And our brain's job, our nervous system's job, is to clean all of that up during the nighttime. So I've worked with people over many, many years on their sleep habits, their sleep health, if that's what you want to call it, and the many things that can intrude on that. And what happens if we don't get to deep sleep? And what happens if we don't have REM sleep? Um, a lot of really big psychological factors can take place and can actually increase PTSD symptomology. People who are not getting restorative sleep in these ways tend to feel the more physiological impact of anxiety. They tend to have a, a very much lower window of tolerance throughout the day. Maybe they're more irritable. Um, obviously, exhaustion is a huge has plays a huge role in that as well and many many other things so i try to train people on their sleep health all the time all the time whether there's ptsd involved or not so let's get back to dreams why we have them and when they turn into nightmares what do we do yes we all dream sometimes we remember it sometimes we don't rem tends to get longer, longer periods of that stage of sleep as the night progresses. So the longest periods of REM, if you're, if, you know, if you're not a night shift worker and you're sleeping during the night, tend to be, the, the longer shifts of that tend to be towards the morning hours before our alarm goes off and we have to get up for the day. That being said, um, that's when we tend to kind of wake up and remember our dreams. Most of us get awoken by an alarm. It's not so common to just naturally wake up at the end of a sleep cycle and have that be the time that you need to get up to go to work or go to school. So we're being awoken by an artificial alarm in any stage of sleep that we're in given the time of morning or you know the wake up time, which can cause a lot of issues as well just with um, how awake or how energized you feel during the day. Nightmares are very common. Let's start with that. We all have nightmares time to time, but when they become cyclical, when they repeat themselves, when they become so horrific that we lose sense with time and space, and it feels as though we are reliving events that we've been through in a tragic or traumatic way, that's when we want to start paying attention. 
So as you know, I work with a lot of PTSD. I work a lot with trauma from varying degrees on the spectrum. And I talk a lot about dreams and I talk a lot about nightmares. The psychoeducation that I start off with is this, is that nightmares, as uncomfortable as they are, can be helpful and can be productive. Not in every case, but in a lot of cases they can be. And I'll tell you why. During the REM stage of sleep, your conscious mind, the one that is on right now as you are watching this video, goes dormant, it goes to sleep. Your ego state of mind goes to sleep and that allows your unconscious mind to really begin to proliferate and sort things through old and new and say, okay, what needs to be cleaned up? What needs to be filed? How can we process these things, whether they are memories, feelings, uh, beliefs, struggles, challenges, or events, right? It's your brain's job and your nervous system's job to file that and clean it up. And a lot of times that represents itself in its dreams and nightmares. Sometimes nightmares are very accurate to real time events and experiences. Those are the ones that can be very problematic. Other times nightmares can be um, sensationalized. They can be fantastical things that normally wouldn't happen in the real world. Zombies, that type of, of thing. Also very scary, but not realistic per se. I always want to talk to people about their nightmares because it means something. Their brain in those deeper stages of sleep are trying to process things that it can't during the waking hours. Okay, that's why they are productive. Your brain is doing things on this unconscious level, trying to take these events, memories, etc., and put them where they belong so that in your conscious waking hours, they're not being presented as triggers and things that you are stumbling upon in your day to day life. Okay, so I always want to start with that. We, we don't automatically need to freak out just because we're having nightmares. The distinguishment here is, um, like I said, if they're based on trauma, reliving that trauma, experiencing that trauma, and they are recurring, and it's a similar picture over and over, then we call that looping. A nightmare loop is not productive. And when we see the looping in nightmares where it is completely overwhelming, you might wake up in the middle of the night gasping for air, sweaty, the sheets are soaking wet. You have a couple seconds where it's, a, where it's very difficult to make time and space um, differentials. It takes you a minute to be like, okay, I'm in my bedroom and I am safe. Those are the things we wanna pay attention to. And there's a reason why we experience these reoccurring, real life, horrifying nightmares. The whole purpose of having these dreams is to complete the circuit, meaning complete the story. And all too often the nightmare, the content of the nightmare itself, itself will wake us up or the alarm will wake us up. And when that happens, it is interrupting the circuit the cycle in which your brain needs to process the entire event. So pay attention because when you're having nightmares that are cyclical, the same thing over and you're waking up and you're just in a horrible state of mind, your cycle's being interrupted and your brain and your nervous system are unfortunately and fortunately very diligent in trying to make things better. And sometimes if it's interrupted, that means it's gonna be on replay so we need to look at different skills that we can use in our waking hours before we go to sleep and after we wake up to help your mind complete the circuit. Lots of ideas. You, you can find lots of YouTubes and lots of research on this. And I'm glad there are a lot of options because some of these might fit more personalities or, or not. You, you have to figure out what's going to work best for you. Some things we can do to help complete the circuit are really setting the stage before you fall asleep. Many people feel hypervigilant. They avoid sleep because they know they're going to have a nightmare um, that messes with their sleep times, their sleep schedule. So maybe they're going to bed really late at night. And if you're going to bed really late at night, 
um, even if you're able to sleep in, it still messes up your circadian rhythm. And when your circadian rhythm is messed up, your cortisol and your um, melatonin cycles are messed up. So already we're introducing stress into the nervous system. So it's important to create a very healthy sleep routine where you're getting to bed at a healthy hour and allowing time to get the restorative sleep before your alarm goes off. And before you go to sleep, you know, the mind is very suggestive. So if you are in a state of panic or anxiety about falling asleep because you could have a nightmare, likely will, then your brain's gonna follow that. And it is likely that you will kind of fall into this loop again. But if you suggest to your brain and you have this dialogue with your own mind to say things similar to, you know, this night is going to be different. I'm learning how to take care of myself. I'm learning what this means. I'm going to have grace with this. Um, And you kind of prime your mind to be more relaxed you prime your nervous system to come down a couple notches and you give yourself that little boost of confidence even if you don't believe it believe it or not that in and of itself can give your mind a little bit of a pivot and a little bit of a redirective space to say okay all right we're all right we are okay we are safe this is our room we're going to make it a very comfortable safe space so that we can go to sleep and make this be okay it's it's outrageous how suggestible suggestive our mind is and if we play into that or not or how we play into it rather so there are some things that we can do before bed Um, but first of the first and foremost thing to do is to create a healthy sleep routine go to bed at the same time almost every night within a healthy time waking up as well let's say you did have a nightmare let's say you woke up in the middle of the night or in the morning by your alarm and you had the nightmare there's still some skills that you can use to bring yourself down a couple notches and to help your brain complete the cycle the cycle and the circuit and it's important to figure out like kind of what the content is for you and and how activating it feels but in your mind or in your notebook you know if you're a writer if you're a journalist anything like that this could be really helpful for you to write an alternate ending okay if the cycle is horrific and it's the worst parts of the of the experience and the trauma and you just keep reliving it reliving it you have an opportunity in your waking hours to close the circuit by making an alternate ending And research has shown that this, I mean, this is a very valid thing to do. It's very helpful and it can change the way that your brain responds to your previous trauma. You can make it as elaborate as you want. It can be violent. You can make this ending, right? You can uh, vindicate yourself. You You can do whatever you need to do to the person who is antagonizing you in the dream. Um... Basically, you rewrite an ending. And I know it sounds a little cheesy, and a lot of people say, like, that sounds really cheesy and unhelpful. But when they do it, what you're actually doing is you're giving your mind, you're giving your imagination a path to go down. Because right now, the path is this interrupted cycle, and it has nowhere else to go but for what it knows. The act of creating a new path for your mind, your imagination, and your nervous system to go down in these unconscious hours is very important. And we do that by thinking about and developing in our imagination the alternative ending. So I've heard over the years all sorts of endings on how to be triumphant and victorious and um, safe and free from harm either temporarily or permanently. And it's all just something that happens in your mind. I've had people paint pictures of it. I've had people pull Google images that represent the feeling or the scene of their alternate ending. And, you know, the biggest, biggest question I get is not, not question per se, but just statement is how is that helpful? That doesn't change what happened. And you're right. It does not change what happened. It does not change or make go away what it is that you went through. But you have to think about it from a nervous system point of view. And any time you give your nervous system and your imagination another route to choose, it likely will choose that route, especially if it is a route 
where you feel safe or you feel like you escaped or you feel like you got away or you feel like you got to do that thing to make that scenario stop. You have to remind yourself, your brain wants to heal and it knows how to heal. And the power of suggestion, even through imagination, is incredible at being able to just put the paving stones in that direction for change. So let's say you woke up and you have this nightmare and you, you, know, you open up your notebook and you were writing it down. You were making a story about how this is gonna be different well, then it's likely that that night or the night after or the night after, and you're really replaying it and bringing in the details of the alternate ending, that your brain will rather take that alternate ending because it doesn't want to be in the loop either. It's looping because it has to, because it's being interrupted. So we need to give it another direction to go in. And that's why it's really important, even if it seems really silly. It's worth a try. It's really, really worth a try. So bottom line is, are we concerned when there's a nightmare? Not necessarily. Your brain and nervous system are doing what they need to do to help clean up and file things away. Is it uncomfortable? Sure. Where we pay attention and want to intervene and help the nervous system to balance itself out, get back into homeostasis a little bit, is when it's recurrent. And it's the similar story over and over when it has something to do with real life events um, like a traumatizing event or a scary event or an out of control event um, and when you keep kind of waking up it wakes you up and you are in distress those are not helpful and thank goodness there are lots of tools and skills to kind of help this what i've seen over the over the course of my years doing this is that the rewriting of the story tends to be the most helpful and giving your nervous system predictability of when it's going to go to sleep and what that feels like um, in the wake cycle, the sleep and wake cycle. The more predictable your day is, and I know a lot of that's out of our control, but the more predictable it is as to when we're going to go to sleep and how we're going to get in this positive or neutral headspace about it and when we're going to wake up, the more sense of safety your nervous system has. If it's unpredictable, if you're going to bed really late or at different times every night and waking up at different times in the morning, every morning, that is very stressful for your hormones for your sleep and wake cycle, for your circadian rhythm, and all of that plays a definitive part in the outcome of your sleep health. So I challenge you guys to try these things, share these tips with friends and family, um, and I really hope that it can help. Leave some comments below, and if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer or help to clarify things. And if I need to do a part two, uh, a follow-up on this in any way, I will. I wish you guys sweet dreams and I will check in with you soon.